What's up guys? Got a interesting new video here for you. We got another truck. Got a good deal on it, on account of it's only most a truck. She's missing quite a bit. It's a, uh, the first four-wheel drive and the first Chevrolet on my YouTube channel. Well, maybe not the first Chevrolet. I might have had a Cavalier on it once, I don't remember. But anyway, this thing is a 93, I think they go by K1500, it's of the, the GMC variety, so that might be different than a Chevy truck, I'm not really sure, I think they're exactly the same. Don't really know a whole lot about the Chevrolets yet, but we're going to now. The goal with this rig is to try to make a couple pennies off of it. We got it pretty cheap on a count of the way that it is. See, we just got started. Yeah. <laughs> is everything better now? Anyway, the main thing that uh that sold me on it is the fact that it's four-wheel drive. It has the trans and the transfer case in it and it has like a full exhaust system that's not not real rusty seems to be covered in mud quite a bit but from what i've seen of the pipes that you can see the metal they're not rusty so the pipes aren't very old she does have a full set of the matching wheels i got two of the center caps so far there may be more in here under the hood is where where things get really sad I just found that inside the truck. We're just moving all the pieces around. See, they robbed the, the valve covers and the radiator and a bunch of other things from up here. I think this is a 5.7 liter Vortec. If you can see down there, they've got like a set of headers. I think those are called like shorty style headers. I found another eye socket, so that's the other one that goes to the left side. Most of the right side's missing. Made some discoveries in here, like for one thing, I found this little device. Never actually seen one of these before in the real life. Seen plenty of them on YouTube when people find them in old cars, but this is a, uh, a little fan slash heater fan that probably like sat up on the dash and didn't do a very good job. That's a good sign that the heater core leaks, if you didn't know. I'm finding most of the interior pieces and there's lots of little stereo wiring bits ran everywhere. There was tweeters in there and whatnot. And I found the headphones here so I guess the stereo wiring job didn't work out too good. Anyway, hey look, there's the floor, the, the floor shift four wheel drive guy. I found that. <laughs> Don't know anything about how that works. Never even shifted a four-wheel drive before, so that's neat. Ooh, ashtray? Is it full? It's full. Nope. Partial. Partial fillage. What is this? Oh, is that a cup holder? Is that what we have? Help me understand how... Ooh. We gotta fix this one, guys. She's got cup holders. That's brand new. Never mind all the wiring unplugged and everything missing everywhere. You see all that under there? Yeah, don't don't pay attention to that. Ooh, is that an ECM? I feel like I feel like it plugged in right there. It didn't get very far, did it? <laughs> yep. Well, about ready for the garbage can. Is that my ECM? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That's the brains of the operation right there, boys. Oh yeah, those are the connectors for it. That's interesting. Oh, what's this? That looks like one of those 
kind of looks like one of the uh, blower motor actuators in newer cars. I don't know what that one is. Electronical doodad. Wow, what a place for a bank of relays. Well, I guess it's probably not hard to get the glove box out anyway. But, yeah. Let's, let's clean it out a lot more. Alright. Moving on with the kit box Chevy project. Here's how the inside is looking right now. Let's stick in some of our pieces back together in the dash just to get an idea of how much of the interior we have. That'll need a lot of screws if this thing ends up going back together. The old bench seat actually looks pretty good. Missing a little bit of material here, but when we got under the seat cover, most it's pretty nice. Seat cover must have been on it for a while. So far it cleans up pretty good on the interior. And the next thing we'll be getting to this evening here is uh, running the vacuum under here. Because, uh, yeah, it's really bad. Don't even bother cleaning up all the squirrel nests before you pull the valve covers. Just snatch them off. You might be able to tell. There's a lot less leaves and dirt and acorns and things. And then I took some PB Blaster and I soaked down all my exposed rocker arms and valves and springs and uh, push rods on both sides. So far, nothing has started making the surface rust. So maybe these things weren't pulled off for too many months on end. I soaked down the old crusty throttle body, got the... Uh, throttle blades to break free so it opens now. Ooh, from here I really wish I had a set of valve covers to set on it. I'm gonna have to find a way to seal that up a little bit. Might look into just buying a set of valve covers for it but I really don't want to just to find out that the motor's all blown up. <laughs> and ju just based on looking at the truck and the way it was the way it was taken care of, I also found one of those radar scanners in it, so they were a race car driver. And it sounds like this motor was hopped up, so she's probably hurt pretty bad. <laughs> but, you know, we'll find out. For now, I'd like that stuff not to be rusting away on me. <sighs> I gotta figure out. I really would love to fire it over, squirt some stuff down the intake, spin it over, and let it pop off a few times and see if it makes a bunch of rattle clank bangs. Kind of hard to do that with no ignition system, though. You see they cut all the spark plug wires, and we've only got like half a distributor back there. So I just don't know. To find out if it, run if it sounds good when it runs, I kind of need to get a distributor and spark plug wires don't really want to put any money into it without knowing that the motor's not bad. So I think the first thing we'll do is turn it over by hand, make sure it ain't locked up, and then at least the covers are off. We get to make sure all the, uh, the valves move and they're not stuck. And I just sprayed them down so that'll help with that if they are stuck. From there, I reckon we might try to pull some plugs out. I bet that'll be fun around those tubes. Pull some plugs out. I've got a compression tester. I don't even know if this has a starter or not. Man, wouldn't that be convenient if it... Alright. Out here again the next day. Looking into the old Chevrolet here. The next mission, remove this cooling fan out of the way on account of it's going to be in the way for all sorts of stuff later because if this thing happens to run and not be in bad shape we're going to be doing a lot of work in this general vicinity. So getting started here, it's always a nice job unbolting these things from the spinny water pump after the belt's been removed and lost and it's missing all the other pulleys but it's usually not too bad anyway <laughs> that just makes it you know harder but you can just put a wrench on the bolt get it over in the appropriate direction to turn left hold on to the pulley pretty good with your hand and with the other hand smack the wrench with a hammer and it's really not that hard getting them broke loose
So now I've got my smaller half inch ratchet on for the first try. Hopefully we don't need a big a big breaker bar. Maybe she'll just turn smooth. But I think this is the first time this I think it's a 350 Chevy 57 maybe. I think this is the first time it's spun over in quite a few years. The spark plugs are still in it too. Well, so far all the valves seem to be moving up and down and seating like they should and it does seem to have quite a bit of the compressions so that's a really good sign I left the plugs in there for the first time spinning it over because I figured we might as well go ahead and see if there's no compression whatsoever I figured we'd at least have uh, stuck valves or something for as long as it seems like it's been sitting but so far rolling over it seems to uh, everything move freely and have pretty decent compression on the wrist feeling gauge anyway it's very consistent too so far there hasn't been any spots way tighter or way looser than others Yeah, and it seems like the more I roll it over, the, the better the compression feels. So what that tells us is from the piston tops above, she's in good shape. Of course, that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything about the bottom end. Don't, don't worry about the bottom end. It'll be fine. I had and pulled all the spark plugs out to uh, spray some lubricants in the cylinder and spin it over a whole bunch more make sure we are all nice and free all the pistons move good there's no ridges from the piston head up seems things seem to be in fairly good condition and looking at the spark plugs here if it'll focus it may it may not there's a little bit of corrosion starting on some of them the ones that had open valves of course with no valve covers but they uh, they all look pretty good considering how I you know bought the motor looking like this no covers on anything but uh, yeah rolling it around uh, it feels good everything moves there's no holes in the sides of the block it does seem like the rotating assembly rotates freely and oh yeah there's one other thing I wanted to tell you about the spark plugs this is my first ever experience with uh, headers the 2B guys, that's really cool. So I thought it was going to be a bit of a pain to pull the spark plugs out, but as it turns out, whoever designed the headers for this motor, which I think is a 350, still not entirely sure on that. I do know I ran the VIN and it used to be a 4.3 liter V6, so that's not right. <laughs> but yeah, these uh, the headers, whoever designed them, did an excellent job because these first two on both sides are like just really effortless to get to nothing in the way I also like how the Chevrolet blocks point the spark plugs straight out that's nice my forwards angle them all backwards on you but the uh, those the top four front four are real easy to get to those back two most ones back most two ones they're not bad at all. You can slide your socket right over the spark plug, and then there's plenty of room to get a ratchet down right there in that area behind the uh, the dipstick. And the uh, other ones here, I can't think of what number of cylinders those are, but you know what I mean. The one here and there on the other side, not the backmost, but the next two up. Those seemed like they were going to be a nightmare for a minute, but all I had to do was learn the headers. There is a way tried to get to them from like behind this way and it's impossible to get the socket on and all that but if you come at it from the right direction on both sides the socket fits it slides right past and then there's like just the perfect amount of clearance to uh, get the ratchet in there and click it into the socket so I just thought that was really cool I've always heard that headers can be a real pain to work around so I expected it to be way worse than that anyhow 
that might be the end of the good news. <laughs> Getting down here on the crank, rolling it over, everything feels great, but when you stop and roll it back and forth, there's a definite clunkage going on somewhere, either timing chain or bearings or wrist pins in the piston. Something somewhere is a little and that's that about wraps up this first video on the new Chevrolet Furbifur. In our next video, as soon as we get back to this project, which will be fairly short order soon in the near future, the next video should be the part two teardown on the red truck that's in there because I want to get the cab off of it before and the motor and trans out before I roll the frame out and get it out of the way. Then we'll put this truck in the shop after I put a heater core in this truck. Anyway, this one, <laughs> when we get back to it, should be in the near future. We're going to get into pulling the timing cover off because just maybe we might get really lucky and all our knocky slap slop is just a loose timing chain. Probably not, but you never know. You never know. Might be. Anyway, when we get into that video, we'll pull the timing, uh, timing chain cover off, figure out that mystery, find out if we have slop, move forward from there, and we'll discuss the new parts that we've started buying for this truck. Oh, maybe, maybe. Is that a teaser? Can you see it? Is Can you see the valve covers? No? Is there valve covers and a starter in it? Is there? Maybe? I don't know. You'll find out. They're, they're not. They're, they're valve cover caps.